Hey, it's Ophi, and welcome back to Starstruck. I am here with Erin Claire Jones, who is a human design expert. Welcome, Erin. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Yay. So human design is not exactly astrology, but it's some astrology mixed in. And we wanted to include it because really for the past year, I've noticed a lot of times when I tell people I'm an astrologer, they'll say something like, oh, I just did my human design chart. And I was like, what is this? And I got really curious and that led me to you. So, so what is human design? Mm. So human design is also based on your exact time, date, and place of birth. And the idea is that it gives us our energetic DNA. So it helps us understand how we're uniquely wired to make decisions, communicate, work within teams, cultivate relationships, all the things, and a lot of very kind of tactical information that just helps us be ourselves, honestly, more than anything else. And so, and it draws from astrology as well as the Kabbalah and the chakra system and the I Ching and quantum physics and genetics and all the things that kind of give us all my favorite things, all, the, all the good things to give us just like a map of how we're really designed to operate at, at, at our best. Awesome. I mean, look, astrology is an amazing, ancient, timeless system, but I'm all for a fusion platter. You know, let's bring in all the things that are enhancing it and will help us learn more about ourselves. So there are five archetypes, mm -hmm. right, in human design. And so if you want to find out your archetype, you can go to erinclairjones.com. We have the link uh, below the video and find out which one you are. It's so fascinating. I could not stop reading when <laughs> I learned mine. I was like, oh, and I got to look up my daughter. It's just like astrology. It's addictive. So um, we're going to talk about the five archetypes and how you can use yours to flow into the astrological climate of the 2020s. So let's talk about what the archetypes are. Let's go through them one by one and give a little overview. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, and just for context, there are about 2 billion different configurations in human design. So if you resonate Ooh. with pieces, I know it's crazy. Wow. So if you resonate with pieces from different types, like it's not the full picture. This is just the first highest level distinction. So kind of have... like your sun sign. Exactly. And then you do your whole chart and you're like, oh, okay, under the, there's probably that many in astrology totally. too, if you went deep. No, but that's the perfect parallel. You know, it's just mm -hmm. like the highest level thing and then it like gains more color as you go deeper. Yeah. So we have manifesting generators, generators, projectors, reflectors, and manifestors. Okay. What is your daughter again? Uh, my daughter's a projector, which when you told me that, it helped me understand her so much. I'm yeah. a generator. So yeah. as I understand, I'm kind of a can-do person and you told me projectors wait to be invited to yeah. things. And that was... This one, this is also what happens with astrology sometimes. That one bit of information was like, oh, I'm gonna yeah. stop maybe being so hard on her about homework and, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. what, look at how she flows socially. So, totally. Yeah, really yeah. interesting. And such a cool tool in parenting. Um, yeah. So, let's start with manifesting generators and generators. So, these are the two that kind of make up the majority of the population. Like you said, both of them have the energy and the life force to kind of build and create and make things happen. And the most important thing in the world is that you are doing work that is deeply satisfying to you. Both types are kind of designed to wake up each morning with like a full tank of energy to use their energy in super satisfying ways and then kind of mm -hmm. crash and wake up recharge. And I mean, the work is to really just like think about what are the areas in your life that are really giving you the most natural energy, the most excitement? How can you funnel more energy into those relationships and those projects? And what are the things that are the most draining and depleting? And how can you pull your energy out of those things? Okay. I think the difference between the two is that manifesting generators tend to move very quickly. Their gift is that of efficiency. They like to have their energy in a lot of things at once. It's not about doing one thing. Their careers tend to be very nonlinear. They're doing this and then this and then this, and they're just pivoting That's as true. soon as the energy is no longer there, you know? And generators pivot too, but it's more like, I'm going to do this thing. And then when it's time, I'll pivot on to the next one. And so, but the idea is with both these types is like when they're doing work that they love, they're creating energy for everyone around them, including your daughter, okay. you know, and when they are doing work that like is frustrating and depleting, like it's just going to pull it out of the room. So, so of service to the world for them to actually use their energy in a way that feels good because they really can bring things to life. The last, so if you're yeah. a generator or a manifesting generator, it's really important that you do work you love then because you're, 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 you've got a full tank of gas when you wake up, at least maybe after the co my coffee, yeah, helps. my generator, and I have friends who are manifesting generators. It's the coffee. The coffee kickstart is really yeah. important because then it's like, I will take over the world today or take on the world anyway. Totally. But then, yeah, so if, you don't, if you're not doing what you love, not good. Okay. Yeah. And okay. even, and it sounds simple, but it's just like, again, these people like have so much energy to give. So it's just about, all about directing it into the right things. And it might not always look like a job. It could be like 
I love being a mom, you know, like I love doing this exercise class and spending time with this person, but like just doing the things that give you energy and help you create it. The last piece I'll share for those types is that they're really designed to allow life to come to them. I think a lot of us are taught that we need to go initiate and make things happen and manifest. And for both of these types, it's all about magnetism. It's just like the more you do what you love, the more you attract things to you and your work is to tune into your gut to be like, what am I available for? What am I not? You know, and really just kind of trusting that. You don't need an invitation. You just need something in your external world to kind of stimulate you, like human design. And you're like, ooh, I want to know more about that, okay. you know? But you kind of want to wait for that trigger to know it's actually the right thing for you. So the next type, which is very different, is the projector. Yeah, Tell correct. us about that. Like your daughter. Um, yeah. I'm a projector too. So basically, projectors are the ones that are really here to kind of be the advisors, the leaders, the guides, the teachers. They don't have that same consistent access to energy as generators and manifesting generators. And so often as projectors, like our energy operates in spurts, like the joke, That's but true. also the reality for projectors is that like we're meant to work three hours a day, which I know is not feasible always, <laughs> but the idea is it's like three hours of output and then you spend the rest of your time really cultivating your craft. I think the gift of projectors is really being very sensitive to energy and really understanding other people. They often work really well with people one on one, and like within the context of a team, these people would make great managers. Um, but also, you know, if they're going to work independently, coaches, therapists, healers, whatever it is, like they're here to guide and support people. Hmm. Really healthy for them to kind of find a modality and dive deeply into it and kind of become the expert in that thing. Um, but yeah, it's such an important system for projectors to find because like. They often are trying to keep up with all the generators and manifesting generators around yeah, them. So to yeah. feel the permission to know that like my worth is not tied up in how much I work and it's really in the way that mm. I see the world and like this other gift and kind of recognizing that within ourselves is so powerful. Um, and so their strategy, like you mentioned, is all about waiting to be invited in and recognized. So basically when you are engaging with another person for a job or relationship as a mother, it's kind of waiting to feel really fully authentically recognized and invited in before you engage, which is... I think for me, felt a little bit passive at first, and then I realized my work was just to make myself visible and available, so recognition and invitation could find me. Okay. Oh, that's good. I love yeah. it. So if you're a projector, yeah, and you have three good hours, then, well, I'm, that's, I mentioned homework with my daughter. It's like she'll do it, but then she gets she drifts in school. It's a long day. Yeah. She needs breaks. and go do something physical or whatever. So. Yeah, we're just not all built to, you know, I mean, especially yeah. the education system doesn't accommodate no, all the different types. No, it's not obviously. good for projectors at no. all. No, yeah, I was doing a session with a mother the other day with a projector son, and he was having a lot of, he was having trouble too. Hmm. Um, but it is just like honoring as a parent, just like recognizing them, like recognizing their unique gifts, like yeah. knowing they need a lot of rest, like not expecting them to keep up. Knowing that like they might get a little bit buzzy and energized when they're around you, but it's really good. I mean, all of us need alone time, but projectors especially really need time away from other people to kind of really just come back to their own energy and own space. Yeah, yeah, totally. So don't feel guilty going into your little cocoon if you're a projector. You're you're receiving energy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And like releasing the stuff that's not yours. Yeah. And the recommendation for projectors is also always to sleep alone, which I know is not um, desirable for some people, but it's really healthy for us to have our own bedroom and our own space because we really do impact each other energetically when we sleep. So, mm. so this is a very empathic archetype, it sounds like, huh? And there are other elements of our design that speak to the empathic piece, yeah. but it is just like sensitive to like people and energy in general. But there are particular people actually including you that are incredibly sensitive to other people's emotions. And so like that's actually going to be more intense in you than in me. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a whole system, it's right? Whole system yeah. So much, yeah. Yeah, no, like that's all. When I'm talking to someone about their chart, I'm like, yes, yes, you're an Aries, but your moon sign. Let's we'll get into that later. So yeah. yeah. Um, so totally the nuances. And then the next archetype Manifestors. Manifestors, mm -hmm. yeah. So manifestors are about eight or nine percent of the population, and these are the wow. people that are really here to initiate and get things started. You'll notice that all the strategies are about like allowing life to come to you, like waiting for an invitation. Like manifestors are here to like get the ball rolling, like okay. make the first move, get things started. They tend to be super innovative. They can see where the future is going and feel like everyone else is like a little bit behind the times. Um, mm -hmm. And they really need like freedom and autonomy and control. And so it's going to be very challenging for them to work or be in environments where they're trying to be controlled or told what to do in any way. So mm -hmm. within the context of a company, this person just like needs like utter freedom where it's just like this is your domain do what you please let, let us know how it goes but often these people kind of work independently because they really like the freedom um, and so their strategy is all about initiating so they're one, the one here to kind of make the first move but also about informing and what I mean by that is once they decided to make a decision they felt an urge to create something in the world it's reflected
focusing on all the people that decision is going to impact and making sure they let them know. It's a way to like kind of allow them to move through the world with a lot more ease and like a lot mm. less resistance. Like even a super simple example, like say you're eating dinner with a manifester and they just like get up and leave the table without saying anything. Everyone's like, <laughs> what is going on? Like where they go? Like their energy is just like really impactful versus them being like, I'm getting up. I'm going to the bathroom. Everyone's like, okay. So it just kind of makes them feel a little bit more supported. And the last mm. piece I'll share is that like, you know, they often don't feel permission to be as powerful as they are because they're such a minority and like their yeah, work is to be, that. yeah. And like, I even got a message from someone this morning on Instagram. He's like, I feel like it sucks to be a manifestor. Like, you know, everything out there feels like it's like not exciting to be. And like, they're so powerful. And like right. their work is basically to be so unapologetic in who they are. And like in doing so, they're probably going to really trigger some people and really inspire a lot, you know? So kind of just like really trusting their own path, even though like it's probably going to look different than the people around them. I'm already have a certain someone in mind. It's like, I, I bet he's no, no. a manifester. Mm -hmm. So totally. I'll be looking everybody up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's that's very interesting. So they're this less than 10% of the population and they are the doers and the makers and the make it happen people. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's so helpful to have these distinctions about yourself because we don't give ourselves permission to be who we are. We try to retrofit ourselves totally. into the world or the society or the group we're part of and the rules of engagement versus, I mean, you have to do a certain degree, but then at what point do you go, look, you know, Totally. I gotta do me. I'm a manifester, people. Yeah, exactly. So. And like, and also when we're expecting the people around us, like my sister's a manifester, you know, like knowing that I was like, oh my god, duh. But I feel like <laughs> when we expect the people around us to be more similar than, the, like, yeah, and, which and we do because we often, look for that, you know, to or just connect. be like different than what they are. So it just gives yeah. us like a lot of compassion and understanding. Like, oh, like I know how to manage you now. Like I know how to relate to you as a sibling. And um, that's why I think astrology and human design and these systems are so powerful as we go into this new decade because there's the biggest population on the earth ever and we have to coexist and we're so polarized by our differences and the language of difference is perceived as a threat now it's like you're not like me so you're them and I'm you know us versus them kind of thing instead of being like okay let me see how I can work with who you are and you can work with who I am totally. so and the tolerance, it. yeah, the tolerance and the honoring and the curiosity sparked when you look at it through this lens is totally. really important. And so. I think it actually sometimes brings us closer together to know that we're also different. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. And the, a very traditional name for human design is the science of differentiation. Oh, is it? It's the okay. science of being different, you know, and of, of uniqueness. And so, but again, it's not meant to pull us further apart. It's about like helping us understand those nuances so we can mm -hmm. actually just honor each other's differences. Love it. Love the it. last piece I'll share about Manifestor is that like, even though they're here, here to kind of really initiate things, they're not always here to do all the building. Mm. So it's here like to kind of initiate and then move on. So like they kind of are going to actually need support to actually help fully bring those ideas to life. Okay. They're not the, they're not the implementers. They're the big idea architects, but don't ask them to build the, the rocket ship it's, that they dreamed the, up. Yeah, exactly. Like, at the, maybe the first bit, but not like in a right. sustained way. They'll go source the materials, build the dream yes. team, find Spock, but they won't yes. get in there and under the hood. Okay. Um, okay. And then reflectors is the last mm -hmm. one. So that's what I know the least about. Well, yeah. they're 1%. Oh, well, that's so why. Yeah, yeah. They're super rare. So um, very kind of magical and unique beings. So these people are incredibly sensitive to energy as well, but also to their physical space. Hmm. And so they're kind of just like always taking in their environment, whether it's a city, a team, a company, a community, and mirroring it back to us. So you actually really get a hmm. sense of like the health of a place just by how a reflector is showing up. Wow. Um, and so one of the most important things they can do is choose to be in physical places that feel good to them because they're going to take it all in. They also have a very um, adaptable identity. So they're always like going to feel different. Like they're probably going to wake up feeling a little bit different every day. And they're going to have periods in a month where they feel like a generator, where they feel like a projector, where they feel like a manifesting generator, where they feel like a manifester. Mm. And so like it's really about just like owning their fluidity and not trying to put themselves into any box. It's more waking up and be like, oh, this is where I am today. Great. You know, mm. like. My reflector clients are like, you know what? I had all the energy in the world this week. I got so much done. Like the next week they can't get out of bed. You know what I mean? So it's just like honor exactly where it is they are. And I think the other last piece I'd share is that like their perspective is so valuable. They have this very kind of just like objective way of seeing the world. And so 
whenever I've had reflectors on my team on the in the past, I'm just like always asking them questions. Mm. I'm like, what do you see about this? And what do you think about this? Because you know you're going to hear something because totally they just, unexpected, right? They just speak right? the truth. Yeah, okay. they just see it so clearly. And so like within the context of business, we call these people the evaluators because they're just mm. like always evaluating what's going on and offering this very objective assessment. Do you have a story or an example of a reflector that kind of shows how they would move in the world? Mm -hmm. I have two that come to mind. So one is that like just to um, illustrate the sensitivity to space, I had one reflector client who grew up in Michigan and she like hmm. hated the space but couldn't control it. And she was diagnosed with so many disorders when she was young and just like had a very challenging time. And the minute she had agency to choose her place, she like came to New York, became a dominatrix, like, and was like in a space that felt good to her. Like everything, like all those diagnoses were just gone. And like, I don't know if it's like always true in that way, but like she was taking in so much in her space. that so when she was choosing to t take in stuff that felt good, like you could see it reflected in like her health, her career, all the things, you know? <laughs> I came from Michigan. The dominatrix industry is not exactly booming there. Yes, so. I know. New York allowed it. <laughs> New York um, gave her the space to do that. And then one other story I would share is that reflector is like, they, which is super unique, they need a full month before they make big decisions. They're designed to kind of wait a full lunar cycle. So when okay. taking a new job, moving to a new city, entering a new relationship, which I know can feel very long, but I will say for all the reflectors that I work with, they're like, oh my God, yes. But like I had one client also a couple months ago who met a photographer and because they're so sensitive, she's like, oh my God, I love what you do. I want to be a photographer. This is my career. I'm all in, you know, because she was mm. taking on his identity because she was so sensitive in that area. Yeah. And then three weeks later, she's like, I'm done with that. <laughs> right. On to the I next can't thing. even post you on Instagram I mean? every day here. Like, yeah. yeah. So just okay. like, and then even so funny, last story I'll share is I was giving a talk once and this woman just found out she was a reflector during the talk and she was like, her dating profile was always like, I'm this until I'm not. But it was just kind of owning oh, the wow. fact that like there was actually no consistency in her and people couldn't expect that of her. That can be good for writing. That, that's Someone needs to take that job right now. Like, Writing your dating profile by human design. I've thought I've helped people write their online dating profiles based on their chart. Wow, yeah, it actually like, would be super useful. Yeah, this or is who I am. This is what you're getting. There's a lid for every pot instead totally. of like long walks on the beach and I'm as comfortable in sweatpants as I am in formal wear or whatever. <laughs> You know, do people actually say that? <laughs> when I did online dating, which was many years ago, you would see stuff. It was new, but it was like, oh my god, it was the worst. We really could have used this. At that oh my time. god. Um, oh, that's fascinating. So, well, let's talk about the landscape of 2020 then, and the archetypes. So, in 2020, uh, there are a lot of Capricorn planets uh, as we start the year, but we're, a lot of Earth energy, which is very sort of fixed and stability focused and rooted and then we're moving into more air which is about ideas but it's it's more of a heady year not super emotional not very not hugely heart driven there there is you know some water energy but it's it's mostly earth and air so um, so cerebral and logical and how does everything go together how can I spread this message so Let's start with the archetypes and mm -hmm. uh, the, the first one mm -hmm. we did, which was the generators and manifesting mm -hmm. generators. So these are people that need things to come to them. Yeah. So how would they, uh, let's, let's just work with the, the earth element because that's really, you know, when you're watching this is probably when you're going to need that the most. So, uh, so how would a generator who needs to do what they love, uh, do in an environment or a climate where everything is kind of about achievement and making a plan and goals and simplifying. Yeah, I think that like they could do great. I think my recommendation for them is I think it's kind of the perfect time to take inventory of being like, okay, what are the relationships, the qualities, the opportunities, the projects that are the most just like naturally energizing and enlivening? Mm -hmm. And how can I funnel more energy into those things? And what are the things that are just like depleting me in all the ways, the relationships, my home, the city, and like just start to like really clean house. Because yeah. I think like remembering for both of these types that like the more like space you have, the more available you become to other things. Mm -hmm. And also like choosing like little things that really light up your energy because even if it's like just going to yoga or spending time with your daughter like if those things are like naturally energizing for you your energy becomes super juicy and magnetic and attractive so like mm. i guess i would take that first part of the year to really take that inventory and clean house so that you start to make yourself available for things to come in the future little con marie of your life yeah. and priorities okay and it can seem so like basic but it's like you know even you're like i'm going to this party because like i think i should 
Like choosing yeah. to not do that thing. I've like, done that, trust me. you know what I mean? Like knowing you're most of service to the world and you're actually just choosing things that feel good in your body and feel juicy and exciting and wonderful. And so like giving yourself permission to not do things because you think you should, but only doing them when they light you up. And I feel like there's sometimes like um, a misunderstanding that it feels selfish, you know, just oh, like yeah. always it, grappling with that yeah. as a generator. Yeah. But it's just like, honestly, like that is how you're most of service. It's just like choosing the things that feel good to you. And in that way, you're such a pleasure to be around. You generate energy for everyone else around you attract so much more to you but when you're saying yes to all these things that you don't actually care about like it's just gonna pull it out of you and like honestly the biggest lesson for generators and manifesting generators is boundaries because okay. they have all this like available energy and excitement and juiciness so people want to take advantage of it and not in a malicious way they just feel that you can handle it they've got this they've got lots to give exactly so let's just yeah so i would also spend that beginning of the year just like really getting firm in your boundaries of like does this truly light me up and excite me then i'm a yes does it not mm. i'm a no Okay, so no maybes for the generators of man. Getting clear on the priorities, where you spend your time and energy, and saying a lot of no's so you can say yes to the things yes. that, and not, and you can't stop yourself from feeling guilty. I know, but this gives some great context for yeah. letting go of that. If I don't do things out of guilt and obligation, I'll have more energy to give to the people and things that I love anyway. So yeah. it's a win-win, my fellow generators and manifesting generators. <laughs> Um, and so how about the projectors then? This, the Capricorn energy is so focused on status and achievement and rules and doing things. So it sounds like that could be a little tricky for them, for the projectors who need to do things in their own flow. So I guess my interpretation, and let me know if this even aligns, is that I yeah. think that like so much of being a projector like begins with recognizing yourself. You know what I mean? And so I would actually, and so much of it is like honing your craft. So like I would spend the beginning of that year like really just honing your thing. Well, that's great. Capricorn is mastery. Exactly. So, you know, honing. So finding your thing and really working on it. And trusting it, you know, and like, and then maybe later in the year is the time that you're like, I'm going to come out of the world and show everyone what I yeah. can do and offer. But like, you've got to recognize yourself for it first. And I, I've said it so many times for myself is that like, when I first started studying human design, like I was not recognized. I was not invited in. Like I was just like in it for three years without it, before I got any recognition. And like, I just knew that it was my thing. And like, okay. I'm in another phase where I have to like go very deep into a certain project before it can go into the world. So I think it's like the beginning of the year is such a good time to just like really go deep into whatever it is your thing is and hone it and refine it and kind of be more internal so that it can come out in the world later in the year. I'm always a bit, I'm big favorite. on, I love it. And I'm big on like the question how. Some people like to ask why, I like to ask how. So I'm curious. So if you did these three years and then what, what was the turning point for you? What was the thing that, that brought you out of that anonymity into visibility as a projector? Well, one is that like, even though I was studying human design and sharing it, like I just wasn't, I had a business partner at the time. And so we were building it together. And I was just like still nervous about sharing it with the world. Like I wasn't actually really telling people or like mm -hmm. spreading the word. Um, and also it didn't feel like anyone was ready for it. Like, you know, I'd be like, human design. Everyone's like, what in the world are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's you know? really like, it was I noticed so... in the last year, people are like talking about it like it's, you know, exactly. a full moon or something. Exactly, yet. you know? Yeah. And so it just didn't feel like people were really ready. And so I ended up like leaving that partnership and I was like, I can't force this, you know? And then hmm. it was the beginning of 2018 that it all just like started. And I think that for me, it was really about choosing to make myself visible and like not choosing to reach out to certain companies or clients I wanted to work with, but just be like, hi, I'm Erin. This is what I do. I love human design. These are all the things that I've learned. And just like, it just, you know, snowballed. I think that like, and it wasn't just me doing it. It was like all of a sudden everyone, everyone was like interested in it. And like, okay. I couldn't have predicted that happening. So yeah. I think it was a combination of the timing, but also me just like fully owning the fact that like, if I'm going to make this work, I have to let people know this is what I do. You know, and then I think like an amazing PR woman came out on the podcast and just like things, the visibility yeah. really did grew uh, me. word of mouth help you at all? Did 100%. people start to, like, did you do readings or charts for the right people and then they recommend, did they start to send you? Totally. Okay. 100%. I also did like readings for a lot of people that like have big communities and big yeah. followings. And so like they were amazing and spreading the word. And like, mm -hmm. even it was, we've talked about, there's an amazing space in New York called the assemblage, which is like a big conscious yeah. co-working, co-living space. And like, I built my company at the assemblage. Like it was yeah. like all started with the members there. And then it was just like, and then it just kept growing. So I think honestly, it was like owning my strategy as a projector. Like it was like, it wasn't visible for me, like how much I was hiding. 
Mm-hmm. And I say this to projectors all the time. I'm like, people can't find you if they don't see you. And like, yeah. your work is not to reach out to specific people. It's about to share. It's about sharing what you do in a very broad way, whether it's through newsletters or talks or workshops or just within your community and like letting people know what you do. And so I think that like when I first started really owning that, and then when the world actually felt like they were ready for it, it just it flowed so much easier. I'm hearing too that with this Capricorn influence of building and mastery and kind of. The earth is about, you know, stabilizing, planting yourself somewhere on solid ground. So what I'm hearing is that you became known within a a sort of semi-private community. So if you are a projector Mm -hmm. in 2020, it sounds like a great strategy would be to find a place where you feel at home and can share openly and feel that your energy is connecting or what you're offering is something that people want. And then it kind of fans out from there. But... Not to force a square peg into a round hole. Totally. And like, let it evolve. You know, I think I was even in a session with a woman from Long Island last night and it was just like, start there. Like start with like the people that are drawn to you in your spot, you know, and like let it unfold. But like, I just think it is paying attention to where you feel the most recognized and investing your energy there. I think that's a great suggestion. Yeah. This is cool. See, it works so well with Western astrology. Yeah, it would. (laughs) Um, So the next one is the manifestors, right? Yeah. Manifestors. Nine percent of the population yeah. that are the doers and will get up from dinner and everybody will notice. Even though you're just trying to go wash your hands. So So I think that like I guess given my experience with manifestors, which is so often that they haven't really felt permission to be as powerful as they are, like I would spend the beginning of the year like honing that muscle of like initiating. And just yeah. like following your creative urges, even if like, they don't really make sense to other people. And like, just being like, this is my path. I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep you abreast of what I'm choosing because I know that's yeah. going to make my life easier. But like, I'm not going to like be interfered with. Like often they're a shadow for them is becoming really angry just because they get pulled out of their flow. And okay. they're really here to just like really honor those urges. So I guess I would really encourage them to tune into what those urges are for themselves. And also like really practice this tool of initiating. I'm like, you think of someone, reach out, you have an idea, start the idea. You know what I mean? Just like those little things of like what does it feel like to make the first move like notice when you're like allowing things to come to you and you're really like not kind of being as powerful and impactful as you're meant to be interesting and Capricorn is also the realm of experts and status and authority so it sounds like manifestors uh this year is great for just owning Mm -hmm. how powerful you are owning your ideas they really could be built on and people are going to be looking for leadership yes Capricorn energy is about leadership and authority. So you, it sounds like this archetype is very much a natural leader, right? Totally. So just you're needed now. You may have the biggest job of 2020 as a manifester. Yeah. So. And you're only going to become the right leader if you just like own how powerful you are. And you're right. like, I might have set some people, but like right. if I just own my power, then like I'm probably going to really inspire a lot more. So. And I found like when people have those sort of quirks, but they're powerful where they're like, look, I I don't eat after 4 p.m. Or I know it might, it's like how you set people up. So if you set up the people around you, like, listen, I, I might get up during dinner because I get seized by an idea and I just have to do it. Or this is how I work best. Like it's, people actually will accept that as long as you're not imposing your way on their uh, rights or flow or whatever. So, you know, owning it means also just setting people up in advance Mm -hmm. to support you. Help me help you, Mm -hmm. manifestors. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And yeah, and then forming peace, the communicating is often not very natural. So just like honing that skill, knowing that it's meant to make your life easier. Right. It might seem, why do I have to tell these people what I'm doing? I I don't even know what I'm going to do in two seconds. But yeah, when you start to notice patterns about yourself, and maybe they have to ask the people around, what, what are the things I, you know, they may not even be aware of it. Totally. And the, uh, the other distinction there is like, you're never asking for permission. You're not explaining why you're choosing what you're choosing. You're just like, by the way, I'm going to Italy. By the way, I'm moving from New York. You know what I mean? Just right. like letting them know, you know. So. Yeah. And I'm giving you two days notice. Yeah, but exactly. That's a lot for most people. So just be happy. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just, I might just up and move across the world this year. Get ready. Exactly. Uh, and then the reflectors, the 1%, how uh, that, so it, the, this is also interesting because mm-hmm. the, the earth energy is very like declaring who you are, this is me, plant the flag. Right. It does, sounds very sort of counterintuitive to like how they're like, 
I'm around this person and then I'm becoming them or I'm yeah. figuring out what I want when I'm immersing myself. So how can they be more proactive in this, in this yes. year? So honestly, like they have a quality and this is going to be true for a few other designs too sometimes is that like it's by being in the right physical spaces that their like direction is kind of like unlocked for them. It's like when they attract the right people, the right opportunities, all the things. Like if they're in an office or a city that feels toxic, like things just stagnate and it's going to really impact their well-being. And so again, a really great time for inventory being like, does my home feel good? Does my city feel good? Does this restaurant feel good? No, I'm going to leave. Does my hotel feel good? Mm -mm, out, you know? So just yeah, like be decisive, super, super decisive and super discerning. Like if a space doesn't feel right, like, it's, it's going to be hard for the experience to really go well for you. And knowing that, like, to really kind of honor your future direction, just, like, choosing the places that really feel good. I would also say for these reflectors, like, to make sure that they're really kind of connecting to themselves, spending time alone, being in nature, meditating, whatever it is. Like, mm -hmm. just taking some space from other people to kind of, like, let go of their energy and just reconnect to what's yours. Because, like, they can get a little bit tripped up if they, like, take those things on as their own. But when right. they're, like, reconnecting themselves, they're like, oh, this is me. Then, like... That's powerful. So I would really use that time to take inventory of your physical space and just like really choose to funnel your energy into the ones that are feeling really good. Are reflectors people pleasers or are they just like chameleons kind of? They're more chameleons. Manifestors yeah. actually tend to end up being people pleasers okay. in the shadow expression. And then resentful of it. Yes, exactly. And then also generators and manifesting generators too. More because, people pleasers for Yeah, sure. because they're just like, I can do this, you know, and like, sure. And like, we all can in other ways. Projectors too, because we're like, will you recognize me? I'll do anything for you. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, so this is like really interesting, like under, working with your nature in, the, in what's being served up. And in the later half of the year as we move into more air and innovation, Probably all the work you do, taking inventory, um, or just kind of owning who you are, uh, can then be expressed through whatever yes. projects or changes you put into your life, uh, especially at the end of 2020. Yeah. So. It feels like the time to like actually kind of reap all the benefits, you know, yeah. of like, I'm, I'll be visible now that I've been refining the thing, you know, yeah. or like, so it does feel like it's the first piece It's really about kind of laying the foundation. Mm -hmm. oh, this is so interesting. So yeah. how can um, people find out more about you? And Yeah. Yeah, what, uh, what would you like people to know about the work you're doing? Like, what are you most excited about for 2020? So um, I'm Erin Claire Jones basically everywhere. So my website, ErinClaireJones.com, and my Instagram, Erin Claire Jones as well. I share a lot of human design info on there. Um, I think that, like, the thing that I'm most excited about, which we've talked about, is one of, I do sessions, and I work with teams and couples and all the things, and I love doing that, but I also have an offering called Blueprint, which basically kind of gives people, like, a 30-page PDF on their unique design, and it's such a great place to get started. We can do a discount, you know, and I think that, like, yeah. that if you're interested in digging in, like, that's a really cool way to just, like, honestly have your own little manual, like, I mm -hmm. sat with a woman yesterday. She got her blueprint two years ago. You know, she's like, wow. I was rereading it two days ago and now everything's changed and it's landing so differently. So I just think it's such a powerful thing to kind of return to and be like, am I really operating in integrity with who I am? You know, cool. so. It's like a printed chart with the descriptions kind mm -hmm. of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, thank you so much for being of here. Of course. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing more from us together in the new decade. Yes. So um, go look up your human design and, you know, get fascinated with another modality. See you later. Bye.